And we are live. This is a video that I've had blah. <laughs> I'm freaking out. Uh, this is a video that I've actually wanted to make for about 20 years now. This is about a 20 year overdue video uh, because we have my mentor mystery in the house. And this is something that I've actually been waiting to do for way too long. Um, I wanted to bring in mystery today because mystery is the single most important mentor that I had in my early 20s. And I'm gonna lead into this actually with a story of how Eric and I met. And it basically goes like this. So I wind up calling mystery on the phone and he says, uh, it's mystery or something like that. And then he said, he said, Owen, what kind of woman would you like to meet in your life to be your life partner? And I said, you know, I'd love to meet a woman just like Jennifer Love Hewitt. And so what mystery said to me was he said, Owen, by the time we're done, you will be a multimillionaire living in Los Angeles, a famous public speaker, and dating the real Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> and it almost all happened. What went it wrong? It almost all happened. What went wrong? Jen got away. Uh, she got away. Yeah. But we had a, we had a sort of a look like here earlier. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so things can happen. And what wound up happening um, was I wound up uh, taking on mystery as my mentor and coaching under him and you can actually see old videos that are online when I was about 22 years old and he would be doing trainings. He actually invited me to come along and help out his trainings eventually and through that process um, the biggest thing that I think I learned from mystery was that you can step into any identity that you want. Okay, so he made a dramatic claim but without me being pressured to step into that dramatic new identity I never would have done it. And we were sitting here earlier and I said, it was you who did this. And, and he said, oh, you would have figured out. He's very humble about it. And I said, no, that's not true. There is, there's no reality where I'm sitting in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And then on my own, I just go, yeah, let's go become a public speaker in Los Angeles and like go do all this stuff. Okay. It took a mentor. And so um, this is a very, very overdue video. And um, mystery has actually got a lot going on this weekend. And what I just said to him was just come on in and just tell us how you've been, you know, just tell us how you've been, tell us what you've been up to. And, you know, he was back in the day on a VH1 show and he was just inundated with nonstop attention. Everywhere he goes in the street, people stopping him, people going crazy. So he's had all that. He's, he's, he's kind of lived that life. And so he's not somebody who necessarily is trying to put himself out there a lot. Um, but what I was saying to mystery was I was like, bro, like people just want to see that you're alive. People want to see that you're around. People just want to see what you're up to. And uh, that's why I want to invite you on here today to see what you're Thank up to. Thank you very much, man. Mm. Thanks for having me. Mm. Uh, how many people from back in the day are you still in touch with? I try to keep in touch with everybody who I can, but if I'm being honest, a lot of people, okay, this is a bit morbid, but there was an old, um, th there was actually a woman that I met in business who said, if you sit by the river long enough, th the dead bodies <laughs> of everyone who you knew go floating by. And I feel like a lot of people kind of give up on the dream. They, you know, they're like out here with us trying to build something and then they kind of go back to a more regular life. And I see their potential and I'd love to see them use their potential, but they just kind of mm -hmm. just go back to doing a regular thing. And so sometimes you don't have as much to you relate on. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. I disappeared from Hollywood for several years, traveling the world. And when I came back, many of my friends have flown away. They've mm -hmm. gone to other cities. So I have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. build a new social circle from scratch every time I come back here because people move mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's fair mm -hmm. yeah but I would say a couple things that I'd like to ask you so here'd be the first thing that I'd love to ask you about why was it that you had an inherent understanding that you could just step into whatever identity you want I mean what what allowed you to just realize that you could just snap your fingers and be who you want to be belief. if you put the work in belief mm -hmm. You just have to believe in yourself, you know? When no one else does, you have to believe in yourself. And really, many of the goals that we pick as kids change when puberty hits, mm. right? Until puberty, you make certain life choices thinking that that's gonna be your future. And then puberty hits and all your goals change around that. Right? Because yeah. this was the, the joke that Barry used to make, right? Like you'd be sitting in a, in a, in a, um, Barry. 
you know, in a very Kirky. <laughs> yeah, like like you'd be sitting in a um, in a in a class, and you'd be like, "What's your name?" And maybe the guy would have a name that's very hard to pronounce, and you'd be like, "No, your name's Adam now. You're a multimillionaire. You're a celebrity." And like you would actually see people go on to do things like this, and it was just when you have somebody who like sometimes you just don't have somebody who believes in you or who sets a standard. And I think what you did effectively was just believe in people and set a standard. Yeah, like, like I was saying, you know, you have these beliefs as a as a kid, and then they change as an adult. Well, a lot of people don't let go of their childhood beliefs and change to adult. Goal setting, right? What I believe is, you have to step up to the big game, the big table, right? The big board, which is life on planet Earth, not just your decision making based on the small town you live in, but you have to wake up to wait a sec. I'm part of something bigger, right? And if that means having to get on an airplane and fly to Hollywood in order to live those dreams. You're living in the real world. You should be following your real dreams. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was getting to. Mm -hmm. You know, follow your real dreams mm -hmm. without clipping your own wings and making yourself small just because you grew up in a small town. For for instance, mm -hmm. don't let that dictate where you can go. Mm -hmm. What what do you think? You had a lot of different insights over the years, like you don't have to allow your social life to be dictated by the limitations that you have put on yourself. Or, you know, you could become, I mean, you were saying from the second that I met you, like, I'll be famous, I'll be on TV. Um, you just I'm, had that belief. I'm delusional. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> I believe in magic. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking for this deep answer. I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> I'm absolutely delusional. And uh, I, I believe in just stepping up to the big plate and, mm -hmm. and running your game. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we travel the world and without apology, we do what we do. Mm -hmm. And I think every young man has to step up into the real world and take his, his shot at doing big things, mm -hmm. you know, as... Barney used to say to Fred Flintstone, think big and you'll be big. Yeah. It's true. Uh, no, it is true. Yeah. I and learned it, that from Fred Flintstones. Flintstones. That's where he got it. <laughs> okay, so another big thing that I learned from you um, was that there was, there was a lot of, so I remember that I would say that the single most important weekend of my life was the trading that you and I did together, okay? And I'm gonna describe to you how I experienced this, okay? Okay. So we talk on the phone and then I, you know, proceed to like roll around on the, you know, roll around on the ground freaking out after my whole new life has been set for me. So then we go to meet up, I knock on your door at the apartment and you had on this totally insane magician's this thing. Boss looking yeah. coat with stars on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I I'm, loved it personally. I, I was blown away by it. And so, so, so what's interesting about that is that like, I mean, to me, this would be like what you might almost call like a halo effect on steroids. Like it just creates this larger than life um, personality. And I just remember you saying like, you know, kind of pulling me in and I'm just like this like small town kid from Canada. And you're like, we're gonna go out now and we're gonna go crush it. And it's gonna go like this and it's gonna go like this. And I'm like, okay. And then you brought me out and you were able to draw so much attention. I mean, I never even had a, cause you used to always say, you don't have a context for what good is. Mm -hmm. You don't know what good is. You think you're good, come see what good is. Yeah. And so you would sort of walk into a venue and there was sort of even a running joke in the community that is very difficult to even socialize around you because it's like this black hole sucking all the attention. Maybe a better thing would be like the sun getting all the attention, but whatever you want to call it. Everyone gets a turn at meeting the women, of course. Sure. But uh, when it's my turn, it's my turn. Well, it's definitely your turn when you'd be out there, right? And, and this was, and you know, for me seeing you, it was a combination of, of your social skills, but also seeing um, the magic that you're doing. So I'd never seen magic up close, so my mind's exploding. 
You know, I'm, I'm watching straws being levitated out of, out of drinks. I'm watching you reading people's minds. I'm watching you do rune casting. People are freaking out. Um, and it, basically what it looked like to me was like, you're just the, the center of attention, gathering nonstop attention everywhere that you're going. And you kind of figured out every little nuance oh, to it. I'm gonna tell you a secret. How I was able to date particularly beautiful women mm. I think some people would find that interesting. Mm. How do you date a particularly beautiful girl? Well, you have to meet her, son. And in order to do that, you need some social proof. This is some female energy around you mm. that if a woman sees you with women, she can save the step of having to get to know you mm. because you obviously have value for women. Therefore, she will feel attraction for you. How did you have that, that insight that you could court so much attention when you're out? What insight is that? I mean, I don't think the average person would be like, I'm just going to take over an entire club. <laughs> like that's not, I don't takes, think the average person thinks yeah, like no that. No doubt there's more, more energy involved mm -hmm. in, in running a group of people. You know, you can walk up to a, a, a beautiful woman by herself, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get her. Mm -hmm. You may not have met her friends. She may not have met your friends. Mm -hmm. It's a little odd way of meeting, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to, you know, create some form of intimacy. Mm -hmm. But in a group, most women are in groups. Mm -hmm. So if you can focus on getting good at building social proof within the group, mm -hmm. you can then parlay that into attracting uh, adjacent groups of people into mm -hmm. the group you're in. Mm -hmm. That's called merging, mm -hmm. where you're merging groups together. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very handy, mm -hmm. you know, and it's fun to do in field, in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. You go to a club and you can not talk to anybody or you can just open up a group of people and say, come on, let's go make some friends mm -hmm. and merge them forward to the next group, mm -hmm. right? And they'll find you much more comfortable to hang around, more attractive because you've got people with you. Mm -hmm. It's just a good game plan. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing that you also had the insight of was that you could just start talking. And that was something that I think in a million years I never would have thought of that, is that you could just go up and begin a conversation with somebody. Instant if you wanna... rapport. Mm -hmm. The illusion of instant rapport. Mm -hmm. Just to go off into a story rather than saying, hi, my name's Eric, what's your name? Or anything formal, mm -hmm. you know, where are you from? We don't need to know where we're from. Mm -hmm to enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't earned my interest in knowing where they're from mm -hmm. or knowing their name even. Not until they've told me a story that conveys that their personality is in there, that they're actually tapped in, you know, that they're awake in there, mm -hmm. not just another zombie in the, in the matrix. Uh, that's what I look for when I qualify mm -hmm. You know, friends, family, loved ones, this is, this is what I'm looking for, you know, personality. That's specific for me. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the biggest um, experiences that you've had in the past mm -hmm. couple of decades that were really transformational for you or that really... Uh, dude, I had kids. Mm -hmm. That was huge. Mm -hmm. I have two kids. Uh, I have a son who's nine and my daughter is 17. So that's transformational. You know, life circle uh, business. That's mm -hmm. what that is. You have kids too. I do. Doesn't Free. it change mm -hmm. things? Yep. Right? Changes your motivations in life mm -hmm. and how serious you have to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. Right? You make things, you get things done a lot more congruently when you have to. Mm -hmm. Right? You've got dependence. Uh, that's been the greatest change for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you, in the, were you in the room with when your uh, first child was born? Uh, I was in the room, but I wasn't there all the way mm -hmm. uh, because of that, um, what is that called? That air, half air, half nitrogen, mm -hmm. laughing gas. Yeah. Uh, I was on laughing gas. It was Got great. It. <laughs> but I wasn't there for my son, unfortunately. My mm -hmm. sister went, mm -hmm. but uh, I had a border issue at Got the it. time. And so they didn't allow me to see my son be born. Uh, I got ripped off there. But, uh, but I've got two beautiful kids. And that is 
definitely changed my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's made me less worry about, you know, like a lot of guys get into the game, they're wanting to start a family. Mm -hmm. Well, I already have that under my belt, so that's not my stress, mm -hmm. you know? For me, I'm just continuing the game looking for companionship. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, particularly uh, worried about time ticking away, mm -hmm. you know? And I've got some sort of biological clock that I gotta worry about. Uh, I've got one less stress to worry about. Mm -hmm. That's less stressful for me. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of the biggest things that I learned from you also was the value of travel. And mm -hmm. I think I, I truly believe I never would have left Kingston, Ottawa, uh, maybe, maybe beyond Toronto or Montreal or something like that. And I remember like when we went out to London and we went out to Amsterdam, yeah, um, yeah. you know, seeing different cities. And I think this stuff was just very, very out of my reality. You know, there's, there's, there's sort of a your limit. Horizons, mm -hmm. finding out what we, you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. Amsterdam's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, uh, where else were we? Where else did we go together? Well, let me think about Chicago. that. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Chicago, Seattle. Seattle. Mm -hmm. So lots of uh, US cities, mm -hmm. but Amsterdam too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes you worldly, you know? Yeah, it's, um, I would say even more important than that is how it changes your brain. You know, it mm -hmm. just, it, it, it's, um, when I go meet people in a seminar, for example, and they're sort of, in this little inside the box reality, you can see it right in the pupils that they're in a limited reality. And I would just wish for nothing more for them than just to get in their car and just go somewhere. Even if they have to sleep in the damn car, mm -hmm. you just find a way to do it. Just get out of your fucking city yep. and don't just sit in your city. And, and you can tell them this, but maybe they're just scraping by or you know they're in a lot of limitations. And you know, even when, when the, the, the single most important thing that you probably ever said to me in your life that changed my life was, I, sa I said, mystery. What if I move to LA and I don't like it there? You know, as I sit in Canada, you know, right? I'm sitting in Kingston. And he's like, you know, and I'm thinking like, you know, I could lose, uh, you know, my buddy uh, Fred from the bar. I have so much to lose, you know, right? And, you know, yeah. and, you're, and you're like, um, you know, couldn't plow the snow anymore. And you said, well, then you'll, say, you'll have a better story. You'll say, you know, you moved to LA and it sucked yeah. and you'll have a great story. And, and that, that was all the logic that I needed to say, oh yeah, it's better to just try something and see that it sucked than to just sit here, you know, just doing the same thing. Wouldn't you rather be broke in LA than broke in Toronto? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to be broke, choose a city to be broke in. Mm -hmm. It's not poor, it's just broke. Mm -hmm. You'll get your shit together in the big city you're going to, mm -hmm. you know? The yeah, universe, you just find a solution. The universe provides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does. It's very true. It does. There's a lot of people on this planet with goodwill. Mm -hmm. And they'll help you in times of need. What was it like being on, on TV? Oof. What was it like being on TV? Well, the aftermath, you know, you go on Conan O'Brien in New York City and the aftermath the next day is full-blown fame, mm -hmm. you know, celebrities know your name, mm -hmm. you know, or at least your nickname. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You know, I'm, I, I strangely have, I feel like I'm getting used to it, mm -hmm. you know, Saturday Night Live parodied me. Mm -hmm. That creates a, a persona for the masses to eat up. Uh, so I think I'm squarely uh, safe in my iconature in the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. I ruled the mid 2000s right there in the, yeah, in this industry. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what was it like having like, yeah, you great. know, like we've, we've shot with like, this is very nice gear here and so on and so forth. But I mean, you've shot with like the big boy gear, you know, right? Like, yeah, like I- Cameras in the clubs. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and cameramen in the, in the walls, mm -hmm. hidden in the walls to capture mm -hmm. our uh, in-field footage for our All TV written show. out front of the venue, done by VH1. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, yeah, lots of money was spent on, on that production. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so very proud of it, to be honest, mm -hmm. and proud of the production company, Three Ball Productions, mm -hmm. did it. And uh, they hit it out of the park, you know. Mm -hmm. 
exemplary, exemplary work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. You get invited to a lot of cool parties? Uh, my favorite memories of the parties were that, that we had were at Neil's place. Neil mm -hmm. Strauss, uh, formerly known as Style, mm -hmm. is now back to Neil Strauss. Uh, we did parties at his place while my show aired mm -hmm. on Friday evenings and we'd have a gathering for the show and then we'd all head out to the clubs after and we did that on successive Friday nights mm -hmm. and that was really memorable, you know, surrounded by love, Fr family, friends, loved ones, mm -hmm. great parties at Neil's place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Th you, those are my memories of, of, the, of the strong social uh, life that came from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you, it's also amazing to see the friendship that you've had with Neil over yeah. the years. What's that been like? Yeah. Well, we haven't, we've lost touch in many ways, all. but yeah, he's got his family and I've got mine, mm -hmm. but uh, we plan on seeing each other this weekend. Mm -hmm. So what, what yeah. do you think allowed you guys I've to connect so much while. when you, you know, when you first he's met? He's a smart cat. Yeah. He's a very smart cat. I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a smart man. Mm -hmm. Better writer than I ever was. Well, he's an incredible writer. An incredible mm -hmm. writer. I look very, I look up to his work. Mm -hmm. I look up to him. Yeah. Yeah. Someone whose uh, book changed your life and my life pretty dramatically. Yeah. The game. Mm -hmm. Chapter one, meat mystery. Mm -hmm. Boom. Right there. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? What's your vision for the rest of your life? Well, I'm into magic. Mm -hmm. So maybe I want to do something with that still. Mm -hmm. Cool. You want to actually do like, like, like make doing magic the full focus of what you're doing for a bit? I'm or? not sure. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I know I want magic to be in my life further, performing magic. And I've got some ideas that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You also have an interest in AI. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, I'm a writer. And being a writer, I thought, I'm going to write another project. I'm ready for it. But I want it to be different from just writing a book. Mm -hmm. And I've already done audiobooks, mm -hmm. which is an extension of writing a book. So I thought instead of doing an audiobook, I would write an interactive audiobook, which is what I've done in Headspace OS. You can head to the delusionmagical.com, check out Headspace OS. It's what I've been working on for the last few months. Mm -hmm. Very proud of the uh, outcome of writing a 220 page book that gets read by ChatGPT 4.0, mm -hmm. and you get to play the book like a video game, but it's audio only. You speak and it speaks back to you in a very intelligent uh, conversational manner. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very pleased that it works. Do you remember when you used to spend a lot of time on Google Earth? And yeah. you would just kind of fly yeah. around on yeah. Google Earth? I, I have uh, Google Earth in VR now. Mm -hmm. So I've, put, I've clocked hundreds of hours mm -hmm. traveling to the places I've been to in real life and getting mm -hmm. clarity and and a top-down God's eye approach, of, you know, or viewpoint of all the different places I've been around the world. Uh, Google Earth is still very cool for me. Mm -hmm. Remember know. the Sony Clie? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so Mystery had this um, little device. It was like an iPhone before the iPhone came out. And he said, look at this. I can show someone who I'm talking to so much just by being on the Sony Clie. So you were kind of like an early adopter. I am that. an early adopter, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that Clie. I made little little home movies with that thing. Mm -hmm. It had a, a camera built into a PDA. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a cool one. Mm -hmm. What would you What would you say to somebody who you know would be watching this long after you and I are gone? You know, maybe about the era that we lived in, or worry less. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say to myself if I can go back in time to when I was a teenager. I'd say worry less. Mm -hmm because it's all going to work out quite nicely. Mm -hmm. I would never have expected to have lived the life I lived mm -hmm. when I was a kid, you know, or, or the toys that we have now, because I, again, I am an early adopter. Uh, we've got VR equipment that I never knew would exist when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. We've got drones, right? Uh, lots of toys. What else exists in the future now? You've got the translator. 
Oh yeah, there's this pocket translator that you can translate with that exists mm. now. Uh, all these different devices I would never have thought were here and now we're living it. So I feel very privileged to have lasted this long. Mm. I wore a seatbelt all the way to now. Oh, yeah. What would you say um, drew to magic when you were first? I mean, not a lot of people just mm. pick up and say, I want to learn magic. I'm thinking. I was a kid. I was a kid. I, w I became fascinated by magic. And there was a small magic section in the library. And I was gravitating to that section all the time for many years, uh, taking books out of the library, learning magic. And it became the backbone to my entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, magic is, is an art form that I've adopted into my entire lifestyle. I perform magic everywhere I go. Yeah. Want to try an experiment mm -hmm. for fun? Of course. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll make shift one. Let me grab my phone for this. Give us yeah. Moment, guys. yeah, no worries. I'm coming right back. We haven't prearranged this, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Are nope. you, you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah, uh, to, be, to be clear, guys, if this is live, if you see Brownie003 says magic or magic with a K. So this is indeed oh, just, uh, live. Just a, mm -hmm. a, a little psychological experiment. Mm -hmm. I found a list. It interested me mm -hmm. on who's on this list. I'll show you in a moment. I found a list of 100 people. Mm -hmm. And I simply found it, copied it, and pasted it into notes. But mm -hmm. before we get to it, mm -hmm. can you think of a number one that I'm not forcing upon you, if that's mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. between one and a hundred and say it out loud to everyone. 43. 43. Are you sure? Do you want I'm to, sure. You want to change your mind? I'm looking for notes here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see there's notes, right? Mm -hmm. You can hold this. Can you click on notes for me? And you'll see a list somewhere. Mm -hmm. oh, you, you're the evidence mm -hmm. here. Uh, famous celebrities. Mm -hmm. Click on that. And you'll note that all the numbers are different, mm -hmm. right? Harry Styles, even Neil Strauss is on this. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Tom Hanks, uh, Oprah Winfrey, etc. Mm -hmm. right? And it goes all the way down to 100. Jack mm -hmm. Nicholson, what was the number that you said? 43. Can you point down to, of all these different names, point down to 43 and name it out loud? Aaron, Eric Von Markovic. You pick me. Uh-huh. Thanks. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so to put in context, when I first met Mystery, we'd go out and he would, he would have countless things like this, a, a, a nuclear arsenal of them. And to, to put in context, just the sheer amount of attention being courted, like I think that's something that, because you would actually get me to do peacocking as an example, right? Yeah, like you kind of dress, do I do a little peacocking, yeah. yeah. So a little, little of the OG peacocking. Yeah. So it's like, I remember when you first got me to dress outlandish and you actually got me to wear a fishnet shirt and you were, you were like, I was like, I can't wear a fishnet shirt. And it was like PVC pants. And you said, look, you just got to try it out. You know, same thing as the, as moving to LA thing, right? You're like, yeah. try it out. If it sucks, whatever. So I go out and I try this and I courted so much attention. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about it is that, and it was actually a student who said this to me. And I always remember this. He said, you know, when you, when you do peacocking for maybe, you know, six months or a year, it almost burned it. But then I also found that it forced me to change my kind of swagger of how I move through life mm -hmm. to where I wound up getting acclimated to courting, made it to courting attention with or without it, even though it's not as much, obviously, mm -hmm. as when you're, you know, dressing all crazy. But like, you know, I've seen you with seven foot tall boots, mm -hmm. a huge top hat. I mean, you're coming in at about seven foot one when right, you're doing that, right? right? Top hat. And yeah. And and six inch black. Yeah, but I also see you dress like this. Attention, because it kind of forces you to change the way that you would carry yourself. What would you say would be a good tip for somebody who wants to learn just to get used to, like, because I, I think this is something that is just really not understood about mystery guys, is the sheer, and don't be fooled by his humble demeanor here, the sheer volume of attention that this guy courts. It, it just, it set the bar for an entire generation of like, how much attention you can court. And it's, it's almost like um, you have electricity that's kind of being shot at you and it's like, 
Can you just let it move through you? And Mystery was somebody who I would observe as able to court this attention. And he would just, he has this big smile and big movements. And um, on, a, on a practical level, it's also the sequence of gambits or comedic mm -hmm. um, material mm -hmm. that you run. What you can do is get people to, to act like they're in a frenzy. Mm -hmm. It's possible to achieve that. And, and they can treat you like you're a celebrity, mm -hmm. even if you're not. Mm -hmm. They'll treat you like one if you can sequence four or five comedic gambits uh, in a row so that they're in hysterics. Mm -hmm. That's what I think I can do pretty well. Well, I've, I've seen- get I... them to frenzy. Oh, that's your number one talent probably, right. along with magic, right? So it's, yeah, you, you have to understand this is an, he walks in, okay, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm 44 right now, okay, I'm seeing this when I'm 22, okay? So he walks in and he basically has the big smile, charisma, walks, laps around, winds up having all these people jumping all over him, it builds a frenzy, and then now he's just teasing people and kind of shushing them away. They're fighting for more of his attention. And then I'm looking at this as, and, and this was, I think, if I was to say the single biggest barrier that I had, that I had to push through, and I wanted to do this to get credit to you, by the way, was a lot of people would see Mystery doing this, and they said, well, and, and the classic thing they'd all say is they'd say, oh, well, you know, six foot five magician, I can't do it. This is when he was, um, he'd been around a long time in the community, but he, but he was still building out his, his fame and, and the proof that he could transfer this. So what happened was there was guys like Neil Strauss, who's like, what, five foot seven or something like that, mm -hmm. he's bald. And then you had me, just this like ginger dwarf guy. And, <laughs> and you know, so, so we're actually finding our own version of that. So what Mystery told me was, well, you're not a magician, but you could do this do it, doing storytelling. And so a lot of my life was going around into venues and just sharing stories. And in the same way that he would use illusions and magic in order to garner a lot of attention, well, my goal was to do it with stories. To convey your personality, you know? The material we use is like a vehicle that your personality rides in to the audience, to the listener. Uh, you need to pick an art form. Some people will sing a Justin Bieber song into a girl's ear and she'll swoon, mm -hmm. right? Well, what can you do that allows them, you know, that gives them the chance to swoon? Mm -hmm. Well, you can storytell. Storytelling evokes emotion. It's, it's, it's graphic. Mm -hmm. You know, it evokes graphics in people's heads. Uh, I'm sure that worked very well for you, mm -hmm. going to storytelling as, as your art form, mm -hmm. you know, holding court that way. Mm -hmm. A good... It was tough, by the way, because you set the bar. All so, right. I'd be, so I'd be like, I want to do it like a mystery does it, you know? So I'm there and I'm, you know, I have like my little, like, uh, like the badass kid that gave me the finger story. And yeah, like, that's just good. It's, it that's, worked. That was a good story. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, so I'd polish this and I would just be trying to court attention and you're PBC, setting the bar PBC latex mm -hmm. that story yep. those yep. are you know absurd stories that were great that mm -hmm. worked great great field and, and then the way that that translated for me was in public speaking i could then take that yeah. effort and then you know you're in a in a hyper stimulus competitive environment like like a party or a bar or something and then you take that into a seminar room and which is actually a captivated audience and that's actually a cakewalk you know, to be in front of an audience that's just there to see you. That will listen. That will that's listen. Yeah. But that's actually what you teaching me that was actually what allowed me to become right. a public speaker. And that's what I was able to Cheers use. To that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's what allowed us to train a lot of public speakers. You know, my 11-year-old son, he's 12 now, but he started doing this when he was 11, can run entire seminars. All right. Without even having been taught that much. Yeah, I've taught my 9-year-old son about openers. Mm -hmm. His favorite opener right now is, who needs a hug? Okay. How cool is that for uh, a nine-year-old to say uh, coming into a room, uh -huh. you know, with a big smile on his face? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so much of your life has been spent being, you know, in positions where you court attention, right? Be, um, the show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being the guru, being my guru, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Sure. So, what is that? What What would you say is something you could relate to someone who's maybe shy or not used to courting attention and you know, like what they would kind of. Well, well firstly, 
If you walk down the same boring street day after day, you're going to want to stop walking down that same boring street after a while. Mm -hmm. But if you change the way you dress, the street will change for you. Mm -hmm. And when you walk down that street, it'll act completely differently back to you. Mm -hmm. It all depends how you are. So what I would first recommend is choose an avatar, look like an individual, look unique, stand out, don't fit in and get a sense of what it's like to stand out because you're not the only one who can stand out. Mm -hmm. uh, women, they have such fashion choice that they get to stand out in such myriad of ways, gorgeous dresses. Guys, are, their, our clothing is so limited, but you can get creative with your clothing options and you can stand out, you can break free from, from being you know, a typical pedestrian from the, the low background noise and be noticed. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's something about you that I think is unique that you can feed off of that and you can let that amount of attention flow through you naturally and are energized by it in many cases. I'm sure you know you have your ups and downs mm -hmm. with it, but in, yeah. when I've seen you, you're, you're very energized by it. And I think a lot of other people shrink because of that, you know, and so like something that would be sort of absurd. Oh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. Know your openers. Mm -hmm. Know what you're going to say before you say it mm -hmm. when you're meeting groups of people and know your opener. If you know it, your approach anxiety will reduce dramatically mm -hmm. and you'll be able to hold your own and hold court in a group of people. If you just know what you're going to say before you say it, know the stories that you're going to run, know them. Mm -hmm. So there's no ums, ahs, pauses, mm -hmm. and that reduces approach anxiety dramatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say are some of the most important psychological components of confidence? So you have the idea of like, you know what's going to happen because you've, you can do it predictably, but what are some of the other components of confidence that you try to share with people that, you know, over the years that you would say are important? Okay, fair. I'm, I'm less concerned with the word confident as I am with competent, uh -huh. right? If you have to ride on the back of a motorcycle, what would you prefer your, the rider to be uh, competent or confident? Mm -hmm. I think competence plays uh -huh. a large key role uh, and competence is knowing your openers. If you know mm -hmm. your openers, you will, uh, and you say it slowly, mm -hmm. you know, without rushing any particular gambit or game piece mm -hmm. or your material. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do that, then you'll come off much more confident, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an illusion. Confidence is an illusion mm -hmm. in my opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. The more attractive a, a woman is, the more nervous you can be in uh, interacting with groups of people. Mm -hmm. You know, she's particularly beautiful. You're going to lose your confidence. Mm -hmm. But if you know what your opener is, then you're going to still mm -hmm. competently open the set, mm -hmm. open the group of people and talk to them. When you, when you were doing VH1, mm -hmm. did you ever feel overwhelmed by that or did you feel confident there? Uh, I felt competent. Mm -hmm. And it was me showing them, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, I was already doing it for years and then we brought the cameras to capture it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What are some tips that you'd have for people for handling breakups, like really gutting breakups? And we might even take that conversation because I've seen this with some of my friends of older people. Like mm -hmm. I've seen men who are 45 or 50 who go through a divorce and are just devastated oh, I'm by I'm 52 it. now. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, you're mystery. You know, you have all these women. Uh, there is a heartbreak mm -hmm. in my life. I live with heartbreak more than others, right? So the one thing or one piece of advice that I can give to anyone who is dealing with heartbreak is to move forward, quite literally get out of the house again, go to a public gathering and start becoming social. Mm -hmm. And if that means having to hop on an airplane and fly to a new city for three days to get out of your small town, do it, mm -hmm. right? That is the fastest way to deal with, uh, with heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have lots of questions that have been pointing up. Do you think, mm -hmm. uh, anything is interesting for us to reach out to? Well, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of questions on there. Um, the, uh, we've, we've got a John, comments board. Would you be able to roll it up a little bit there? 
sure. for us and see if anything comes up as a anything question. positive because you jackasses out there are writing <laughs> shit. <laughs> did we eat Bob Saget asked, did we eat 10 grams of mushrooms before the stream? You know, I saw Bob Saget out and it was, uh, he was a very nice guy. guy. Um, what I would, sure mm -hmm. he's a that. very, very nice guy. Go a little bit more up John for me. Okay. Um, legendary. Good mm -hmm. A little yeah, bit. Hey, it's been really cool hanging out with you yesterday, you today, mm -hmm. seeing you again mm -hmm. and finding out that you have found your voice mm -hmm. because when we met, you were 18 years old and you had mm -hmm. not yet found who you are mm -hmm. and now we can't shut you up. Yep. So, so not to sound condescending in any way, but I am very proud of you for having done that. Thank you. Fair. I'm proud of you too. Thanks. Thanks, man. We did good. Mm -hmm. We're still at it, man. Still going. <laughs> Right. What would you guys like to see too? And put this in the comments. Um, this was something that I said to that I've been kind of trying to hammer mystery with for the past couple of days, and uh, I've been I've been a little bit heavy-handed with it to be honest. But the thing that I've been telling Eric is that you know, mystery he's kind of run his race, right? He's he's a legend now, and he's forever a legend, and he and he's forever embedded into history. And you know, I have a lot of things that I'll go on to do and mystery is my original mentor. And there's many other people who mystery is their original mentor, uh, people who might surprise you. I think you'd be pretty shocked by it. And some that I've said to him, and I just want you guys to give me your thoughts on this in the comments, but I think that at a certain point, you know, once people have contributed enough, there's no pressure to have to reinvent the wheel. There's no pressure to have to, to stress out over things. I think people just want you to engage. I think everybody here, would just love to hear from you more, to see that you're alive, to mm -hmm. see that you're happy. Yeah, but, you know, there was there was a uh, what do you call that when they fake your death? Mm -hmm. uh, a prank, propaganda, propaganda a prank mm -hmm. that uh, I had uh, died. Mm -hmm. This is about 15 years ago, but it hit home, and and my brother at the time, when he uh, read that I had died, he he was in tears when I called him, you know. He was pissed off that I was still alive. No, that's not it. What, uh, <laughs> what, do you think made you, what do you think made you want to be a bit more private in recent years? So I'm still alive and well. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I've got kids. So you're sure you're more private with your family and just kind yeah. of, you know, did you, did you ever grow tired of having so many people recognizing you uh, when you're out? No, it wasn't. It, it's not that. I'm, I'm very grateful that the, the people that recognize me know that I'm a social being and, mm. and have no problem coming up, saying hi, mm. wanting a picture, you know, mm. and tell me about the, the changes that have happened by reading my works. Mm. Uh, very flattering, very cool. I, I'm bringing out the best in others. I love that. Mm. Uh, one thing that concerned me was that I was being written into kind of like, you know, the, the national narrative mm -hmm. uh, by being uh, brought up in Saturday Night Live, parodied, mm -hmm. you know, along with Obama. He was in the actual skit that they parodied me in. Mm -hmm. So it gave me some concern that, you know, I'm a Canadian with no political aspirations whatsoever. Uh, I'm here as a visitor and I'm not out to get political in any way. Mm -hmm. But it looked like, I don't know. It just made me feel like I didn't want to keep it, doing it. Yeah, it's, it's tough when you're, you lose control of your own narrative and your own identity. Yeah. And um, it's uh, a very unique experience to read about yourself or to see videos about yourself in a way that's not remotely who you know yourself to be mm -hmm. by people who have an agenda, but ironically profess that you have an agenda. Yeah, it's you know? the parody of it. And, mm -hmm. and the parody got very large, mm -hmm. you know, well over a dozen, uh, and Neil and I had counted, he had 11 on a, on a list once, mm -hmm. but well over a dozen different television shows have parodied uh, either mystery or negging mm -hmm. or, you know, some aspect of this community. Well, even the show, uh, have, you ever, have you ever seen the movie um, Kingsman? Kingsman? Have you ever seen uh, Kingsman? No, I haven't. Is it good? You know, one of the most truly epic days of my life was I was out with uh, a new girlfriend at the time. And I had just had a wonderful day with her. One of the, just a really fun day with a new girlfriend. It was just a great day. And then I was watching Kingsman with her at the Grove and uh, they actually brought up some of our stuff in there and I was cheering and I was right. really, 
Okay. Excited by it, you know. Okay. Uh, uh, Seventeen again is a, a movie with the Zac Efron. Mm. They parodied uh, well, Peacocking. Way, he's a very cool guy. Okay, yeah, of course he would be. He seems awesome. Uh, they, they parodied Peacocking. Mm. Big Bang Theory, Theory parodied Peacocking as well. Uh, but it kind of got big, mm -hmm. you know. It became big. Uh, Negging was mentioned in Mixology, mm -hmm. Ryan Seacrest production. A uh, great uh, show on uh, social dynamics, mm -hmm. on bo how boy meets girl. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it threatened me a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? So I did uh, a thing that I think you would have done too. I was living under the Hollywood Hills, under the sign Hollywood, and it would look down on me every time I would leave into the backyard and look outside on the observation deck. I'd look up there and it would say, What's next, kid? You know, it's like, I made it. Okay, I'm here. Now what? Mm -hmm. So I decided to travel and tour. Mm -hmm. And I did that for years. Mm -hmm. I just traveled and toured for years, mm -hmm. uh, teaching what I know best. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing to, you know, I actually just did uh, uh, nature travel for about 280 days a year for f about four years that's now. Cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, truly beautiful. And I'm going to take, and, and Bexter, I'm going to make sure that you guys, next time you guys are in town, we're going to do a little trip. Maybe, have you guys ever been to Sequoia National Park? I'd love to see those trees. Let's do Sequoia. It's okay. only three and a half yeah. hours away. All right. Okay, we're going to do that. I'd okay? love that. I'd love that. Yeah, you guys ever been to Big Sur? Nope. Okay, that's about five hours away. That's the coast of California. It's just stunning. So we've got to put that on the list too. Okay. You know, so we're going to make that happen, okay? okay? We'll shoot some videos there too. You guys can do some nature videos with me. And so it's, um, it's beautiful, I think, to do something just for you. You know, it's just for you. It's not to build clout. It's not to, to get that dopamine hit. It's just for your presence and joy from your short life. And that's a beautiful thing. But you know what I'd also say, and this would be, you know, and I'd like you guys in the comments to tell me what you guys think. But what I would say is, I think people want to hear from you. And I've just got to speak collectively for the whole community. Fuck these motherfuckers that talk shit. Fuck them. <laughs> you know what? Fuck them. Fuck them, fuck them, I, fuck them. You know, it's like- I've already lived my mm. life. You can't take it away from me. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck I've them. I've already lived it. Because mm -hmm. I think, think people, people want to hear from you. And the, the cool thing about your content is like, it's been beautifully curated, right? You have digital programs, you have books. You'll perhaps create more, but the point is you have it. So people, they don't even need you to like, sit there even teaching them. I think people just love you, you know? Um, great friends of mine, uh, celebrity acquaintances and friends of mine, uh, people always ask, you know, where's mystery? And they, I think they just want to see that you're happy mm. and just want to see the adventure. Like, it would be amazing, like, Bexter, if you guys could even just do simple things like, say that you're in Brazil, you don't even need to, it doesn't even have to be a million lessons or, you know, things like that. Or just a meet and greet. Just to come out and see people or yeah. to, um, to see what you're up to and to see that you're well and that you're happy because it's like at a certain point you've done enough and you can always do more but you but you but you've you've done it you know right like think of all the people on here that could be 22 23 and they haven't left their legacy yet you know they haven't run their race yet they haven't slayed their dragon yet and they've looked at your content and their life has changed and you know they i think they just wanted to see that you're happy and see that you're that you're that that well you know then then to catch uh, friends, family, loved ones up to speed. Mm. I've had some circle of life issues that have brought me down. Mm -hmm. During COVID, I lost my mother and my brother. And, you know, I'm a, an older, wiser man now. Mm. I've got children of my own and I'm doing well. I know. You know, mm -hmm. I'm getting through it. Mm -hmm. And I have the voice in my head that tells me to just keep going. Yeah, but keep we miss going. you, bro. And not everybody gets to be me and hang out with you behind the scenes. Oh, fair. You know, because we've got to hang out a little bit over yeah. the years, but yeah. Yeah. not everybody gets to do that. Not everybody is uh, your old protege, you know? So they would want to, you know, just like, even just if you guys could post just a, maybe a little channel of just like you guys out having fun and- Well, we kind of do. We, we do mm -hmm. We've got Bexter Lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, do YouTube here, channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah, of it being on mine, would you would you want if if we could just um, do you want to come in and say hi for a second? Do you, would you guys like to meet Mystery's heterosexual life partner? 
<laughs> their name? My <laughs> man. We had to go there, didn't we? <laughs> Everyone, this is Baxter from yeah. London. So let's see what we have as far as chairs, John. You're, you're, John, you're going to have to hop up and help us here a little bit. Um, I want you to be comfortable. So here, you let me. Sit here? I want I want you guys to, to sit. Let me. I'll grab a little chair right here, okay? And I'm going to pass my mic to Baxter. There's a chair. Just hop on in, buddy. Okay. I'll grab a chair right here. And then we're gonna maybe move Thanks for joining us, everyone. Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to the big screen. Okay. I'll, I'll be a little bit stable here. So here, I'm gonna pass. I'd love for you to share a little bit about what your adventures the past uh, okay. couple of years have been yeah. like. You're gonna have to no put worries. that to your mouth. Okay. Where do we begin? Stick that right there. So we'll go to the well, big screen. I guess, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is we didn't know how many cities we'd been to. 115 according to Facebook. That was years ago. Yeah, that's true. That's old. <laughs> we've been to more. But we've done seminars around the world together, teaching the elegant art people around the world. Mm -hmm. So and, then social skills. And social skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, social Maybe dynamics. Maybe social skills, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Learning to be social. How to build a social circle in a new city you're in, for instance. You know, 30 days from now, you're going to have a Barbecue. Who shows up? Only the people you've met during the last 30 days and maybe their friends that you invite. That's, that's what it's about. It's about building social lives. You know, mm -hmm. even if you've, you're starting from scratch. What's it been like for you on the adventure? I'd like you to share a bit. Uh, in what way? I mean, it is a ro it's been a roller coaster. It's, you know, we peak cities we want to go to and people fly in and you know, we have we have a Go fun. Party. We, yeah, we have fun. Mm -hmm. we, we you know, we socialize. We mm -hmm. we we know that city pretty well after we finish with it. In mm -hmm. in three days we build a social life in that city. Mm -hmm. And then we teach the people to build their social lives in their cities. But of course, uh we have our favorite places we go all the time. Helsinki. <laughs> I love Helsinki. It's not hell. It's not hell. Mm-hmm. But yeah. How, how have you watched a mystery evolve over the years and how have you evolved as well? Um, how, would, how would you say that? It's uh, just perfecting everything, adding new stuff. Uh, there's, you know, new things come to mind all the time. So yeah, we're just building on everything. Every, I, I think the list of what we teach grows by every event. You're perfecting it for the next event and then the next event you have to perfect it there. But of course, different places. We did South America. We did seven seven cities in, seven in like weeks, in yeah. about five countries yeah. Uh, around. Yeah, in, in seven weeks, and it was cr it was absolutely crazy. We were just meeting people constantly, constantly, constantly meeting people, and um, with that becomes a way of evolving. That you know, we're, we're dealing with language barriers. We're dealing with, they like to dance more. And uh, Mystery's not into dancing, right? But this is how Mystery adapts, right? <laughs> so there's a beautiful girl, and Mystery doesn't want to go on the dance floor, mm. right? It doesn't it's need to go on the dance floor. I, I like giving it now mm. and then a little thing, mm -hmm. you know? It's all rehearsed, it's not, yep. I can dance great or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mystery, had a girl dancing around, he's just spinning her, but he's still off the dance floor. His arm is so long mm -hmm. that he's leaned, locked in, back on a post. She's dancing mm. on the dance floor. His arm is on the dance floor, mm. but he's off the dance floor. Say that, and he looks at me and goes, see, you don't mm. need to go on the dance floor. Just, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but just funny things, you know, mm. epiphanies and life lessons and knowing, knowing the, uh, the mind of people a lot more, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's especially the opposite sex. It's definitely... Let's uh, try to keep as much of yeah. this as we can. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's the opposite sex to each? <laughs> Fair enough. Right? We have women on the course. You've had women. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, we, yeah, it's not, it's not subject to any, anybody in sure. particular. Yeah. yeah, pass me the mic for a sec, too. So, okay, so, Mr. Mystery, how old are you now? I'm 44. 52, okay? 52. So, Bexter, yeah. yeah, how old are you? 46. So, I'm 44. Okay, so I've, I've definitely hit a point in my life being 44 where like, it's like cut the bullshit. Like, I mean, there's plenty of life left to live, but there's only so many of your younger years left or middle age years left, right? So I'd love to hear from you guys, just getting older. I mean, I just so quickly zone out from anything that's not feeding the reality that I wanna create. You know, if I'm in a movie 
and it's boring, I'm not, I'm okay to walk out halfway through at this mm-hmm. point. Okay. If yeah. I'm in a, if I'm in a conversation and it's, you know, not with you guys, but with some random person and it's not fun and they're not bringing mm-hmm. joy to my life. Like I'm, I'm okay to say it's really cool to meet you and kind of keep it moving. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, and I wish them the best and, and they're on their journey and I respect them, but I'm just at a point where it's like, uh, Eben Pagan, David D'Angelo, one of the great lessons that he gave me was he said, it's like there's this mountain of gold in front of you and you're, you're wading through this river and there's little piranhas that are nipping at your heels. And if you stop and you keep trying to pull off the little piranhas, the other piranhas are going to see that you're slowing down and they're going to see blood in the water and they're just going to come overtake you and you're just going to be like this little skeleton in, in the river by the end of it. But if you could just tolerate a little bit of crap, but just keep moving towards where you're going, accept it then what winds up happening is that you actually get to the mountain of gold. And I feel like as I've gotten older, it's just, I realize like I'm 44, I've got, like, let's say, uh, like, could you have ever imagined being 60, 60? You know, so I'm yeah, 60, yeah, like I'm 60, I'm 60 years away from being 60. You're uh, 88 years away from being 60. You are um, 12 or, did I get these numbers right? No, I'm 60 years. You're 14 years away from being 60. And you are uh, 55 years mentally away from being 60. And so I would say that, um, like, how has your perspective changed on time and the value of life and enjoying life? Like, what would you say to, you know? Down every day, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Sometimes I wake up going, what the hell is going on? What am I doing? Yeah. Other times I know exactly what I'm doing. And when I wake up, I, and I've got all cylinders fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, it changes day to day, so it's not an age thing yeah. for me. It's not what, like I'm what, getting what, older, what? life is getting faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, when it, ultimately, I'm looking for a companion. Mm-hmm. That's been my, my, my adult goal, mm-hmm. and I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm getting out. I'm in Hollywood, mm-hmm. you know, with purpose. So. I still have my goals, you know, it's not like I've achieved everything in life and now I stop thinking about what I want. I still have goals. I'm still reaching towards them. I'm still attaining daily, you know, and it, it doesn't have to do with age. It's just, that's what you do, isn't it? When you, when you get your goals, like I've achieved everything I wanted to achieve. I achieved everything. Mm-hmm. So now you just set new goals, mm-hmm. keep going. Otherwise, you know, you get stagnant. So I can tell you my biggest shift with getting older. All right. So All my right. goal, okay, so have you ever seen the movie Tropic Thunder? Sure. Okay, so you remember uh, Robert Downey Jr. says never go full retard? Yeah. So my slogan for my mid-40s is always go full retard. <laughs> Okay. So in other words, just have as much, like all that I think about is I'm just like, how can I have the most amount of fun that I can? What's the next level of adventure or fun that I can have, right. you know? And I'm just looking to be around people that like to laugh, like to have fun and just go do fun things. Are you a pleasure seeker? Well, I think that my challenge has been that I'm not naturally a pleasure seeker. I'm more naturally goal oriented. Mm-hmm. So, but what I've realized is that, you know, you're running around as this like, teacher guru person saying, oh, you could be like me, but if all that you're doing is grinding and hustling all the time, it's like, oh, I'm gonna grind and hustle to teach you to grind and hustle. Well, then where's the fun in that? And, and so when I hit my 40s, I was like, well, you know, you wait your whole life to start your life. And it's like, well, I'm 44, like this is my life now. So my goal is to have as much fun as I can. And, and I'll probably take on some other huge goals at some point, I have some, but I also wanna have a period in my life where I've had as much fun as I can. And then I see you guys, you know, gangster around South America, you know, living the life and it's like, it's pretty badass. That's kind of what I was saying to you is like, you know, you're sitting there, you're 46 years old, you're in South America, you're with mystery, you're having fun. I mean, like life doesn't get better than that. Like you're really living the dream. So I was curious if you have like, if you have like a true understanding of just how awesome it is and like oh, yeah, what that totally. means to you. Yeah, I mean, you can get a bit used to it, obviously like any any much of a good thing, mm. but look, yeah, we, we are literally having a great time around the world. We're having, mm-hmm. you know, and always looking for the one. That's the dream, isn't it? Always, yeah, looking, always looking for, for the, the one. one. It's a never, it's a never actually <laughs> search. <laughs> grind to find. But there is a phenomenon that's come make up. Make sure that people can hear that. We, we thought that, you know, 90% of this, this lifestyle is grind. Mm-hmm. You know, grind, grind to, to find. find. Mm-hmm. Looking for the next bubble there's, of love. The there's an algorithm to, to it. Mm-hmm. You know? People want shortcuts and it's not always the case. Mm-hmm. You have to put the time in. Even if it's raining, if it's snowing, we 
did a one of our seminars mm. in Toronto and it was what negative 17 degrees yeah. but we still got out there three mm. venues a night yeah three venues a night and it was mm. a success it was great yeah so yeah you could, there's no excuses yeah mm -hmm. the the party's happening without you if, if someone's you, partying someone's partying somewhere right now and if you're not there it's your fault you can only blame yourself mm -hmm. yeah well i think i guess what, what i would just sort of and this would be like to me like i love what we talked about here and i would just say that the big thing that i would leave people with is if you're somebody who's say 25 years old, or if you're somebody who's 22 years old, like I was when I met Mystery, or if you're somebody who's in your 30s or whatever, life's gonna go by, right? Like, I mean, you know, you and I met, um, I guess, 22 years ago. Okay. Okay. Well, and it feels like a week. It just, yeah, time flies. You know, it just blows by. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I asked you what was the major lesson. You said, don't worry so much. And I think that's what I've realized as well is like, stop worrying so much. Bad shit will happen. Good shit will happen. Control it to the extent that you can, but you know, you got to live your life, you know, and you and I'll be sitting there much older than this someday, you know? And so it's like, life's going to go by. And, you know, I could remember hanging out with you in Toronto and just learning and taking things in and thinking like, you know, what would my life be like if I had like a skill set like mysteries or what would my life be like if I could public speak like mystery? Or, you know, what would my life be like if I could travel like mystery? And then I think the main key thing is to learn from different mentors. You're not going to get this on your own. You're just not. Um, there's no reality where I, you know, sit in Kingston and then I'm doing the things that I've done if I didn't have a mentor. And so, you know, take the advice from your mentors and go do it. And I would just say work as hard as you can and have as much fun as you can. That would be like that's kind of the message that I would have to people from the 22 years that we've known each other is just have as much fun as humanly possible leave a legacy, add value to others, you know, pay it forward and just work as hard as you can, have as much fun as you can and help as many people as you can. And, you know, that's sort of like what we've been doing for this sounds like a 22 good years. Plan to me. Mm -hmm. Seek a mentor. It's one of the best things you can do mm -hmm. to improve your skill set dramatically is to go seek a mentor mm -hmm. and hang with them long enough so you can learn something mm -hmm. rather than just say you're friends with them. That's not exactly. the same thing. You have to actually seek a mentor, hang with them, and learn the ropes for whatever skill set they want to teach you. Mm -hmm. Instant you know? feedback. But what mm. you, a, fun, a fun thing that you said it's to me th that made me change the way I thought is life is heaven and hell at once. Mm -hmm. So you just got to make the best of what it is at the time because it's always going to be heaven and hell. But if you've got some great people in your life because you're socializing a lot, then it's heaven. Mm -hmm. If no one's in your life, it can be hell. Mm -hmm. So heaven and hell. You know, I found myself during COVID uh, when my, you know, my mother had passed away and I was down in, in uh, Mexico. You know, I escaped to Mexico in my sadness, but everything was fine. You know, my mother isn't in pain. I'm in Mexico. It's a beautiful day, but I let the world just tumble down and turn my otherwise heavenly day into pure hell. Mm -hmm. We're living in heaven and hell equally, you know, and it's who you hang with in a day that changes that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Good points, Bexter. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, guys, let Mystery know to come back soon. Go hit him up on Instagram at askmystery on Instagram. Make sure that you follow him. Make sure that you learn from him. And maybe send him a little bit of love to encourage him to keep putting himself out there if he feels like it. And that's, of course, up to you. But we'd all love to hear well, more from you. Answer. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for being here, Mystery. Pleasure, brother. Good to see you. You too, man. Bye, guys. Be well, everyone. Take care. <laughs>